have equal opportunity. But we all have the opportunity to be better than we currently are. Um, and Sandra, over to you. Do you mind, you know, giving us some background on what you do and what you do, especially in DCU as the head of equality, diversity and inclusion? Sure, Toju. And firstly, I'd just like to say thanks for inviting me to be here today. Um, I'm delighted and uh, honoured to be part of the panel. It's a great lineup. Um, so my background is I'm in DCU coming up to about four years now and I, I spent over 20 years in the telecoms industry before I came into DCU. Um, so ma mainly on the tech side, I've done everything from technical engineering to sales to customer uh, delivery. Um, and I've been involved in diversity and inclusion for probably about 13 years. Um, I think I can probably say that I set up the first diversity and inclusion team many, many years ago uh, in, when I worked in O2. Um, and myself and the CEO, uh, Danuta Gray, at the time, uh, we were involved then in setting up a diversity council for Telefonica in Europe. So that was back in the days when, when we were still curious around what is diversity and inclusion. Um, I think for me, the catalyst really was around, you know, my sense of fairness. And I think throughout my career, and um, particularly as I, I got older, I started to realize that the workplace was not necessarily fair and equitable for everybody. Um, and I really wanted to do something about it. Um, I suppose my mantra has always been don't step over it and leave it for somebody else to fix. <laughs> and living by that um, can be quite a challenge. I'm sure all, everybody uh, today has, has stories to tell about that. Um, and my connection to DCU is I studied organizational psychology in the university. So they had asked me to come in uh, and share my work um, on diversity and inclusion. And then eventually they asked me would I come in and lead on diversity and inclusion for the university. So my role is I'm responsible for um, developing and delivering on the strategy for the university around equality, diversity and inclusion. And um, part of that role is representing DCU on lots of kind of external uh, national bodies such as the Higher Education Authority, Irish Universities Association, National Women's Council, um, where we focus on race equality at a national level and try and drive kind of policy and practice change around that. It's very, uh, one of our key priorities, I would say, over the last two years, we've, we've been doing that work. Um, and I'm also founding director of the Centre of Excellence for Diversity and Inclusion. And that's very much focused on, we describe it as research and action. So we take the academic research off the shelf and take it out into the workplace uh, to try and encourage employers to be more equitable uh, and have more of an awareness around inclusion uh, and diversity within the workplace. Thank you very much. That's amazing. And it's just interesting to see, you know, how you've inter integrated from psychology to tech to diversity and inclusion. And there's lots of transferable skills and expertise and knowledge that's all in there, right? And all the different things you're working on. So that's, that's brilliant. Um, and the next question will be to Sandra. A very similar question really is, you know, what um, diversity and inclusion initiatives do you have in your DCU Centre of Excellence that will benefit minority groups in Ireland? Sure. Um, yeah, so we have we've kind of two things, I suppose, it would be good to share um, with uh, the audience today. Um, so the first is uh, we established the Centre of Excellence in uh, back in 2018. And as I said, it is around kind of helping employers with all different aspects of diversity and inclusion. Um, and our mission really is to transform lives and societies and workplaces through um, diversity and inclusion uh, practice. And with the rise of the uh, Black Lives Matter uh, movement in the US, we had a lot of employers coming to us looking for support around race equality. And as I've mentioned, we've been doing a lot of work in the background at a national level. Um, so it made sense for us to uh, try and support while we have the momentum now before people, you know, before it goes away, we do not want this to go away, okay? So we mobilized very quickly and we've brought um, employer groups together. So we have, so there's ourselves, we have IBEC, we have business in the community and other organizations. Uh, we've reached out to the community of uh, experts, uh, people from all different uh, backgrounds and expertise to guide us and we have created a forum. Um, so that would be something I would ask, particularly young people, maybe early stage who are in the workplace, to come and share your experiences uh, because we want to make sure that uh, when we develop resources um, and start you know training this out into employers what we want is it to be based on solving the problems and the barriers that you're facing in the workplace so that's really important um, there's different aspects of it uh, uh, some is around creating space for thought leadership 
so not to always be the white people talking about it so that what we want to do is be the be part of the change but creating space for people to tell their own stories because that is really important and um, so that's part of it um, the other aspect then is around kind of policy and practice so everything right the way through from attracting into hiring uh, practices into um, supporting minorities in the workplace and, and, and right the way through into promotion and how do you make sure that everybody is considered and there's equitable access to opportunities and promotion within in the workplace. And something that uh, Riti mentioned, which I think the advice there is absolutely phenomenal for a young person starting out in your career. And, and I think what we're trying to do is to remove some of the barriers that might knock you back, okay? because you know, you can be a dynamo and running at 100 miles an hour and be full of enthusiasm, but there's some systemic challenges that you're going to face that you're probably not going to be able to move on your own. So what we're trying to do, and we will do it, is remove them. So call them out, identify them, call them out in a constructive way, encourage and persuade employers to, to take action, okay? And, and I think that that's really important that collectively uh, we're going to be able to do that. I think one of the things I would encourage uh, people to do is think about uh, mentorship and sponsorship because that's really important. So if you're not 100% sure of what direction should you go or, you know, if you're, you don't feel particularly comfortable because you're, you're, you know, you're new into an organization or you're, you're the minority in the room, please ask people ask for a reach out and start to build a network because you know that's one thing I have to say now I've lived in lots of different places around the world but one thing I will say about Irish people is they love to be asked for help and they will uh, they will help so you know reach out find a mentor really really important file find a mentor early on in your career and try and work towards um kind of coaching and, and sponsorship around that and um, the other thing um, yeah, so I, 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 again, please, um, Evelyn is part of our working group and our expert group, Dr. Evan Joseph is part of our working group. Please, if you, if you want to get involved in that project, uh, uh, come on board. I'm happy for you to make contact with me. And the second thing is, uh, we've been building a software tool for the last two years. Um, in, we were Enterprise Ireland funded, uh, and it's, it'll spin out of the Centre of Excellence at the end of the year. And essentially, it's a software tool that uh, for transforming the culture of an organization from the inside out, that's how we describe what we do. And within that tool, it tackles uh, topics related to stereotypes, uh, bias, identifying and, and um, creating awareness around bias in the workplace. So we have a tool of technical uh, developers and content developers at the moment. Um, it, we, when we spin out at the end of the year, we're gonna be looking to build a team and I have to say, I have a team of nine people working on that, and I'm the only white Irish person on the team, because that's it. We need people to challenge us as we build these. It has to be built in, inherently built in, that we're, you know, that we're the people we need to represent here are are the ones that are challenging us and making sure that we're doing the right thing. So please get in touch for I am on that one as well. Thank you very much. That's another amazing news. And, you know, I think your target audience is not social entrepreneurs. This time it's, you know, young people and people in the workplaces and employers and organizations. So that's amazing. Thank you very much. I have the opportunity to be better than we currently are.